So the Harry Potter Alliance right now is doing a campaign called Fan Works Are For Fair Use. And I'm suddenly realizing I wear this orange shirt a lot in these videos. I do have more shirts than this. But it's an entire campaign to raise awareness about how fandom and fan works influence people and how they don't detract from the original source text but add to it instead. Which <laughs> basically, if you think fan works and fandom are somehow detracting from the original text, we may have an inherent problem in our understanding because so many things are fan works. Do you like Percy Jackson? Then you are reading a fan, a fan fiction of Greek mythology. <laughs> Uh, do you like the wide Sargosa Sea? That is a fan work of Jane Eyre, and it just keeps going and going and going. Basically, any vampire thing ever, including Anne Rice, I'm looking at you, lady, <laughs> is a fan work of these old folk tales. And it... That's not even the point at this, at, at this point, but I, I feel very passionate about that popular culture, visual culture, is fair use. It has to be fair use because we can't grow as a culture unless we can, unless we can critique it, unless we can interrogate it, unless we can interact with it safely and fairly and not worry about getting, I don't know, sued. But the entire Harry Potter Alliance campaign is really more about how fan works and fandoms have influenced you personally. And I have a really long history with fandom. I'm I'm old enough to remember when everything was on GeoCities and Angel Fire. I'm not quite all the way back to like Usenet, but I'm I'm working towards it there. And my my first like active fandom was actually something that Mercedes Lockie had as her her fan group. It was called Queen Zone, and you you created your own herald and wrote stories and had pen pals, and it was really exciting to know that there were other people who read these books and were who and who were as excited about them as I was, considering most of the people I knew in my everyday meet space life thought I was kind of off my nut. But Mercedes Lockie's books were really important for me because it was the first place that I remember seeing some seeing characters who were LGBTQIA. It was really important to me as a, a, a young person who who wasn't sure about their their sexual orientation and is still coming to terms with my gender identification as well as my romantic orientation and things like that. It's like these were very important to me. And it's not just that. I mean I, I know a lot of people end up with lots of friends out of fandom and I'm <laughs> you would never guess this, but I'm very shy and retiring and introverted and it's hard for me to to make friends in these ways, but I did make a few friends, and we're still friends. We're not like super active friends, but we are friends together. And fandom <laughs> taught me how to think critically, how to think more critically. I was always a critical thinker, but it taught me how to think more critically and wonder about the spaces that we weren't seeing, about the the subtle signs of other implications for characters. What the history of something was that we weren't necessarily presented. It taught me world building, which it's like I'm an artist, but I'm also a writer, so that's important. And that world building that, you know, a writer really needs actually comes into my artwork too. I build ecologies and worlds in my artwork. It was all, fandom was also the place from which I published my first academic article on the use of uh, on the use of language in fandom and how the use of the way fans use language causes it to evolve more quickly and if you're on Tumblr you might have seen this post about how Tumblr has caused language to evolve. Fandom started at Tumblr's continuing it mostly because a lot of fandom has moved towards Tumblr. 
it's like fan art has been a source of inspiration for me and I've just in the last couple of years started making my own. I, I've been a fandom writer. I, I've written for several fandom specific shows and though those writings have taught me how have helped my own writing evolve as well as my understanding of how writing works and how language works but and, and it's not just like writing and art stuff it's like fandom and fan communities YouTube I learned how to edit video mind you not so great because I wanted to participate in this community to to share things in a more more transparent way. Hence the name, Project Transparency. Fandom and fan works have been so important in my life that I wouldn't, literally would not be who I am if it weren't for them. I, I wouldn't be the critical thinker I am. I wouldn't have the understanding of the universe that I have. None of it. And it's part of the reason why I get really worked up when people want to come in and take away a community's ability to create around a source text. And there are some that I can kind of understand why they do it, but I also think they, they kind of misunderstand what it's going to do for them. Because as much as fan work creation is an outlet is a, a le is a practice is an experiment for us it's also free advertisement for these shows I've ended up in a number of fandoms because somebody has created beautiful fan work because of it or you know they people have created beautiful fan works that have drawn me in or amazing fan fiction or just brilliant meta and I had to watch the show or see the movie or listen to the podcast so that I could understand them. And it, even when it's not an active community that's built, because I'm not the, always the most active participant, it does allow me to feel like I am part of these communities, even when I'm quiet. Even when the communities are sometimes not the community that I know we can be. We're all works in progress, right? So, if you believe that, fair, that fan works are fair use, go click on the link uh, to the, the, the website, to the campaign, go find the Harry Potter Alliance, there will be links to everything that I can think of in the drawer. Okay, so I have other things to do, so 